Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. Today is a bright sunny day and I'm going on a day trip to downtown Vancouver. Everything looks beautiful on a sunny day. I love this building in the corner of the street. And here we are on Burrard Bridge. And here's the look of the bridge from the distance on Granville Island. This bridge is leading us into downtown Vancouver. So over the years when I was on Granville Island, I sketched this bridge from a distance many times. And I will do that again soon. Here we are at Waterfront, Vancouver. This place is called Canada Place or Vancouver Convention Center. We have a really broad panorama here of the mountains and the sea. There's a giant water drop sculpture here in the corner. Lots of tourists. And here I am enjoying the sunshine by the waterside. It's really calming to look at the, the ripples. It's very good for all of us to connect with nature. It really helps us to develop as a sensitive human being and as artists too. And this is one of the reasons why I like to sketch everything from real life observation because I'm really sitting here and being with nature with every, with every moment of it, being part of this universe. And the photograph is too static and way less engaging than real life. Now I'm doing a little sketch of the mountain, the sky and the water, just drawing the contour of the mountain top. Very nice little curves. And now I'm starting to draw these little patches of snow around the peak areas. Yeah, so Vancouver has a lot of uh, nice snow cap views of mountains in the distance. And using very loose lines to show the ridges of the mountains. If you observe very carefully, the mountains are not flat. That contains many parts of ridges. Now I'm starting to add these very simple geometric cityscape structures below. Buildings, uh, factories, maybe warehouses. There's a cargo ship right over here. Yep. And just simplify what I see into these simple squares and rectangles. There are boxes on a cargo ship. Yeah, and just adding as, as much details as I can around the bottom. Now I'm using these choppy little broken lines to show the foliage on the mountain and at the same time showing the direction of the ridges to give three dimension for the mountains. Now I'm just using these loose longer lines to show the ripples on the surface of the sea. This is the way that I sketch water. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be straight lines, a little curvy and broken. And here is the finished line work of my first little sketch. It took me about five minutes. And now I'm gonna sketch this view on my left. Uh, it contains Lion's Gate Bridge nestled in the middle of the uh, foliage. Again, starting with the shape of the mountain top, all of the peaks, and then the foliage in the foreground. Yeah, a lot of little uh, sharp lines going up and going down, drawing the wire of the sus suspension bridge drawing the body part of the uh, bridge. Adding some more foliage textures. Adding these little shapes to show buildings and other urban structures around the base. So when I'm drawing these little textures, I'm actually not really copying. I'm just seeing, sensing it and drawing from my impression in a very relaxed way, because the more that we copy, the more stressful it is. 
And the point is to capture the spirit of the landscape, not to capture a physical likeness only. I'm just drawing this gas station right here underneath the bridge for the uh, ships, sea airplanes, and private boats. Some more peaky lines and foliage textures, kind of bushy over here. Kind of following what I see and very rarely looking at the paper and judge it. And as for the foreground part, there's a little hill and behind, I'm just adding these patches of um, blocks of buildings. Actually, this is the city of West Vancouver. And most of the city is taking over half of this mountain now. And I think it's still growing upwards. Just adding final bits of snow around the peaks. And that's pretty much it for the line work. It took me another five minutes. Now I'm ready to add watercolors for both line drawings. Okay, so now I'm just wetting the sky area and ready to make a little gradients. So when we look at the sky, is never just one kind of solid blue. Okay, so first of all, I'm just grabbing some cerulean blue mixed with a tiny bit of green. The sky it feels to me is a little turquoise tone in it, not just you know a regular kind of blue from our preconceptions. It gets more translucent and a little greenish towards the horizon. And now I'm wetting the mountain area and red, and also the water area. For the water, I just grab a little bit of cobalt blue, mix it with some leftover green. The sea is kind of this deep blue color with a little bit of turquoise mixed in. Just paint it very loosely. And I just grab some viridian green, mix with some yellow ochre to paint the mountains. The mountains are looking very bright on a sunny day with a variety of different green tones. So as you can see, I just played around with different uh, ratios of greens and yellow ochres to get these different tones. I'm quickly painting the cityscape there with leftover yellow ochre there. And the next layer for the mountains, wet into wet, vivid green mixed with a little bit of brown or burnt sienna. Again, as you can see, I'm not covering every single space of the first layer. Just to let it shine, it really helps to give three dimension for these mountains. And just grabbing a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and pink purple or royal purple. Mix it in for the shade or for the ripples of the sea using very loose and thinner brush strokes to show the layers of ripples. And I just grab some red to paint the cargo ship. Red and brown, just very loosely painting these buildings in the distance in a very impressionistic way. Again, we don't have to stress about painting inside those shapes. Painting very loosely gives more life to the things we paint. And another quick layer for the mountains. A little bit of blue into the uh, viridian green and brown mixture. Adding some more contrast for these mountains. Again, not covering every single space of the previous layers to give three dimension for the ridges. And a little bit more ultramarine blue mixed with a royal purple. Add a little bit more contrast for the ripples and the shines now. I think I captured the essence and I stop painting. Now I'm ready to paint the next sketch. So again, just wetting everything with clear water so the colors can be really translucent, especially for the sky and the water. I want the paint to be very translucent, not solid. And water for the very first layer really helps adding a bit of turquoise around the middle part of the sky and dragging it down. And just let the colors blend together by themselves. The brush strokes are gonna fade away as it dries. 
and very similar colors for the water. Ultramarine blue or cobalt blue. And also, this is a pretty diluted color. The first layer for waters, I like to keep it very translucent and free flowing. And wetting the foliage area of this hill. First layer, the lightest tone of green. Yeah, just some lime green or radiant green mixed with lots of yellow. And now I am mixing some darker shades of green with burnt sienna or brown and radiant green. Yeah, so again, just play around with different ratios of brown and radiant green, so have different shades. Again, I, I'm painting by impression rather than copying those colors that's out there. So it's not exactly the same as what's out there, but it's, it captures my feelings about it. And also the atmosphere and the three dimension of this hill with different shades of greens and the brown. Now I'm ready to paint the mountain in the distance. Just wetting the area first with clear water, adding on a mix of varying green and yellow ochre. Again, I always like to start with a light tone, very watery kind of, because I want to create a sense of depth. Okay, so the next layer is a mix of varying green and brown. I'm using this special kind of uh, jumpy brush strokes because I want to create this kind of loose texture of foliage. So as you can see, there are gaps or spots between every brush stroke to create this kind of illusion of uh, tree foliage and adding a bit of thinner brush strokes in between the bridge and the cityscape in the middle of the mountain. And grabbing some leftover blue to paint the shade for this little white building on the bottom of the hill. And again, just grabbing some colors like gray and a bit of red to paint this little gas station and for the bridge in the middle. Adding another layer of darker tone of green for the hill in the foreground because it's um, in the foreground it needs some more definition than the mountain behind. So a little bit warmer green and some brownish green around the bottom. Now I'm just painting the shadow on the bottom of the hill using very thin brush strokes of cobalt blue or ultramarine blue mixed with pink purple or royal purple. And I'm using these lively brush strokes to show my resonance with the movement of the ripples on the surface of the sea. So working from real life at this point is very important for me to get the energy of the water. And here is the look of my two finished sketches. So in total, it took me about half an hour for both. And today I actually want to spend more time walking, getting some fresh air and enjoy the sunshine rather than spending too much time sitting and sketching. And here are the sea airplanes around the harbor. These are very interesting bicycles. I think we've got to be really fast grabbing one of them. Now I'm getting hungry, so I'm walking to the waterfront station building and I'm planning to uh, get a burger and some fries at A&W. It's on the first floor of waterfront station building. Yeah, it's a very nice setting here. And I got a double buddy burger or cheeseburger with fries and a cup of coffee, my favorite combination. And before eating, I'm going to spend about 10 minutes to sketch them. So I'm beginning with the coffee mug on the left, starting with the ellipse top and the rings. It's a short little cylinder, the upper part of the cup, the sleeve, and it's getting smaller around the bottom. Now just drawing the rim of the lid, the opening. 
So I really enjoy drawing coffee cups because it has so many different interesting curves and circular shapes. Just quickly drawing these words on the sleeve and the little pictures, and connecting the uh, the paper wrap of the fries. Drawing these fries very quickly, almost using a blind contour way, and yeah, there's the handle of the、uh, little drainer. Adding some more sticks of fries, connecting one piece after another. They're in different directions, but overall, all of them are in very long prism shapes. Yeah, lots of overlappings, and this drainer is in the shape of a cube. A little bit perspective here. Now I'm connecting the wrap of the burger, which is roughly a square shape. And it has a three dimension with the opening and a little bit of the side on the right, drawing the curve of the burger, the lettuce in the middle, very organic lines, just following what I see using an almost blind contour approach, the bottom and the middle part, just adding the word A and W upside down, and the arrow. Yeah, drawing the inner three dimension. A little bit accentuation on the bottom to show shade. And the drawing the wires crisscross of this drainer. So just writing down the time and the little note. And it's time for watercolors. So rather than wetting the areas first with clear water, I'm just putting on some lemon yellow for the first layers directly, just to save time. A bit of orange for the for the cup, a little bit orange for the、uh, the top part of the fries that are very crispy. Yeah, a bit of orange for the tips of those fries, and mixing a little bit burnt sienna into the orange for the bread bun of the burger. Just let the colors blend wet into wet very loosely. Yeah, and the、uh, parchment paper is kind of yellowish. It sees through the wires. Some brown or raw umber for this part of the the, the paper cup. Using some, some leftover gray, or a mix of、uh, blue, pink, purple, and green for the shade part. Of the cap, and again using the leftover brown to paint some shade parts of the fries and bit, bits of shade around this、uh, paper wrap. Yes, a lot of similar colors. So I don't like to use a lot of colors. I like to reuse the colors and light green. Blend on some more viridian green for the next layer. Wet into wet. Some brown for the patty, in between the burger buns. Some leftover gray for the metallic parts of the drainer here and there. Underneath the burger, there's a little light shadow. And I decided to paint a yellow brown platform for my meal, so they can stand on the sketchbook page better. Wet into wet, some dark brown shadows underneath on the, around the edge of every object. That's it. So after lunch, I'm gonna walk around a little bit more. The waterfront station building is actually very very big, containing a lot of、uh, cafes and little restaurants. And the metro is down below, underground. And here is Gastown. This is the steam clock.、Um, every beginning of the hour is gonna make some music powered by the water steam. I just really love looking at these heritage buildings, and I decided to sketch this corner in the last little space of this page spread, starting with a steam clock. The top part is kind of like a pyramid shape in three dimension. This part is kind of like a cube shape. Just keep keep connecting different parts one after another. The top, 
and the clock. It's a circular shape, this side and there's another side. So the advantage of drawing in a very small space like this is um, it really helps to omit too many details and just capture the, the bare essence. So as you can see now, I'm just focusing on the uh, very simplistic general shapes. There's a tiny bit of inner details. Yeah, the body part of the clock and then the base. And these are made up of different prism shapes. And there's a street sign there on the left. On the right, there's the, uh, the lamp with many circular light bulbs. The base of the pole. Yeah, so again, this is all about connecting one thing after another in, re in relationship to the main body of the steam clock. I want to put someone there just to uh, show proportion. And another person, I think they're waiting for the steam clock to make music. But it only happens at the beginning of every hour. Yeah, so I drew three people there. Add a little bit of accentuation and shade. I'm starting to draw some branches and twigs up there. Starting to draw these umbrellas of the Starbucks on the other side of the street and the railings. Okay, and now I'm starting to add these long geometric shapes of the rooftop of the building behind and another lamp on the right hand side. Again, just seeing and moving my hand and the pen on paper without looking at the paper so much. Just capturing the bare essence, these windows and the shade inside the glass with solid black ink. These windows are going this way because they're in perspective. And another floor upwards. This is a very loose and open-ended sketch without a frame. And sometimes I do like to sketch this way. And adding another person here just to give a proportion to the overall cityscape. And another person in the foreground walking by very quickly. So just drawing from my impressions. Yeah, just keep adding these very simple human figures as I see as they pass by. They're in different sizes because they're in different distances in space. And drawing these big glass windows on the uh, first floor. Some more windows towards the middle and left. And just coloring parts of these windows with solid black really um, uh, adds more definition and density to this building. And contrast for the sketch too with line work only. Let add a little bit of hatching for the glass windows and the sidewalk line over here and the brick walkway just to give even more sense of uh, perspective. Just adding these dome shape in on the left side. Some other shapes and railings that I see. Okay, so that's enough details of the line works. Now I'm ready to paint watercolors. So just wetting the building area first with clear water, adding bits of uh, yellow ochre. It looks nice and bright, it's a sunny day, and grabbing some red, diluted a little bit to paint the red brick walkway. So this part of the street is made of uh, heritage red bricks. Keep adding some more warm yellows and bits of uh, leftover green turquoise for the glossy parts. And grabbing some leftover green to paint the umbrellas of Starbucks and the little rooftop there. Mixing in a little bit pink purple into the green and blue to paint the shade. Yeah, just adding bits of colors by impression. 
So the key to add contrast and drama to any uh, set of uh, still lifes, urban landscapes, and nature landscapes. In general, the most important thing is to have a nice balance of warm and cold colors, or in other words, the bright, fresh colors versus the gray tones of the shade areas. So as you can see, now I'm adding a lot of these colder areas and the shade colors around the clock and the building, especially on the first floor. Add a little bit purple to show the brick walkway in the foreground a little bit using a few brush strokes. Adding a bit of fresh green and yellow to show the budding leaves of this tree here. And for watercolor painting, it's always a good idea to start painting the lightest tones. As you can see, I painted the yellow buildings first and the warm red brick walkway underneath. And then I gradually started to add the darker gray tones. Now I'm just starting to add these colors for these people passing by using fresh red, green, and some leftover colors. Yeah, and keep intensifying the key area here in the middle to give even more contrast with a mix of ultramarine blue and pink purple, or royal purple. Yeah. Using little brush strokes and the side of the steam clock to give it more three dimension. The other side of the steam clock is brighter. And here is a look of my finished art journal spread of the day. So thank you so much for watching my video, everyone. If you like it, please like and leave a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And moving on, I walked to the art supply store called Opus Art Supplies nearby. And here I am. It's been like more than two years since I've been physically inside an art supply store. And I really miss this feeling of being surrounded by all of these art materials. And here are the handbooks. Uh, the brand I think is Speedball. These are all watercolor sketchbooks of different sizes and formats. Uh, large portraits over here. And I think I'm getting a really uh, interesting long panorama format today because I think I'll be traveling a lot in the summer just to get ready. And these are on a discount. So Faber Castell produce very nice fine liner pens and the Pitt Artist pens are waterproof. So if you're buying fine liner pens, make sure it's Pitt Artist pen made by Faber Castell. Okay, so other series of pens made by Faber Castell may not be waterproof and they can come in many uh, line widths and colors. Yep, just love these vibrant attractive colors. And also Windsor and Newton also produce very good fine liners. Yeah, and these fine liners are 100% waterproof and I've tried them before uh, some years ago. They work out really well with watercolors. And these are white gel pens and they're called Jelly Roll. The brand is Sakura. And I think I'm going to get one to add very precise lines for my sketches. And Daniel Smith produces very nice uh, quality watercolors. So these are a little bit pricey, but they're very good investment. Um, every single tube can last for a long, long time. So just one little drop from the tube can last for a long time. And the uh, Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors are also pretty affordable and good quality. And these cheaper ones, I'm not so sure. Uh, but Sakura Koi watercolors are definitely great. They have a variety of vibrant colors. And yeah, these half pans, they last for a long time. And it really, it's really of value. And the Sakura Koi also comes with 36 half pan watercolors, but for me, I don't need this many colors. 24 is just good enough. Yeah. So when you're buying watercolors, I don't really recommend buying those cheap ones under $15. Um, yeah. So, and these tiny little accordion books are actually very cute. 
but I think we can all make our own little zigzag books by folding one sheet of watercolor paper this way. But anyway, this is a very interesting concept. These are Stillman and Byrne sketchbooks of different series. So every series, the paper weight is different and also the paper color might be different too. The texture of the paper is different from series to series of this brand. And yeah, so these are very, pretty good quality, but my favorite watercolor sketchbooks is still Arteza watercolor sketchbook. Okay, so here I am back home. So I didn't buy a lot of stuff. I just only buy what I need. And here I got these two travel watercolor sketchbooks for discount prices. This one is the Hannah Muel watercolor book. The first time buying it, I really want to give it a try because a lot of sketchers are recommending this on social media. And this one, the handbook journal that I've tried before, the paper is really good for watercolors. The paper is about um, 110 pounds. And yeah, and it's tended for watercolors. I really want to try this fun little panorama format. I also got a white gel pen just to add highlights sometimes for my sketches. And one kneadable eraser just for erasing some of the pencil works when I'm teaching um, the beginner's classes or for some of my other personal work. And yeah, 